Friends, it gives me immense pleasure to speak virtually at the Asia-Pacific Finance Roundtable being held in Bangkok, addressing critical aspects of climate change. Investments in innovation and technology in clean energy are significant, or if I may even say inevitable, for the world economy as well as for the planet as a whole. Already, the private sector is, is taking steps to advance low carbon technologies. According to a, a new report by the International Energy Agency Global, energy investment is set to increase by 8% in 2022 to reach USD 2.4 trillion with the predicted rise coming mainly in clean energy. The fastest growth in energy investment is coming from the power sector, mainly in renewables and grids, and from energy efficiency. Since 2020, the pace of clean energy investment growth has enhanced appreciably to 12%. Spending has been boosted by, by, physical, by fiscal support from the government and aided by the rise of sustainable finance, especially uh, in, in, in advanced economies. Renewables, grid and storage now account for more than 80% more than of total power sector investment. Spending on solar PV, batteries and, and electric vehicles is now growing at rates consistent with, with reaching global net zero emissions by 2050. Institutional invest investors around the world are increasing the volume of capital they are, they, they are allocating to, to renewable energy infrastructure as a means to hedge their climate exposure. Further, many of the large financial services and asset management companies are, are calling on investing companies to disclose information about their approach to climate change, their, their governance of climate risk. In fact, globally it is being witnessed that investors are propagating, disassociating their investments from businesses using fossil fuels and reallocating this capital somewhere useful, such as towards clean energy. Yes. In so far as the Green Climate Fund is concerned, it is an initiative to stimulate a conceptual and ideological change towards low emission and climate resilient development pathways in developing countries. It helps countries design finance and implement innovative climate initiatives that can be that can be replicated, scaled up and sustained after project completion to achieve uh, uh, you know, tra transformational change. The primary G GCF principle is to follow a country driven approach, which means that developing countries must lead GCF program and project implementation. GCF has three programming modalities. The, the project approval process for, for full size projects and programs. Second, the, the, the simplified approval process for projects under a, under a certain funding threshold and with, with minimal to no environmental risks. And third, readiness and preparatory support program, grants for strategy, policy uh, and capacity development. Well, as the time at my disposal is limited, I will suggest to all those interested in knowing more about GCF to visit their website to find more information. I will now close my talk by touching upon the meaningfulness of the 27th Conference of the Parties to the, to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP27, which rests on the natural follow-up on the outcomes of COP26 to deliver action 
on a range of issues critical to confronting the climate emergency from instantly reducing greenhouse gas uh, gas emissions building resilience and 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 adapting to the inevitable impacts of climate change to delivering uh, on the commitments to finance climate action in developing nations challenged with with a rising energy crisis cop 28 shall strive for enforcement of the historic paris agreement in its letter and spirit for the sake of our children uh, next generation and and planet as a whole thank you so much have a great round table discussion good luck and god bless bye bye